Hey, Connie. Hey. Hey, so we're, we're ready to crack on again with our, um, you know, uh, learning and development. So essentially what we did last week, we worked through um, the HTML. Uh, let's have a look. We worked through um, the HTML by building a cat photo app. So yeah. we completed uh, this whole thing within two hours. So our aim today is to go through learn basic CSS by building a cat photo menu. Um, we're going to try that. <laughs> we're going to try and complete within two hours if we can. Great. If we can't, then you know we'll pick it up later on. But yeah. um, this is our goal for today. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm just going to. Going to here as you go. Um, if you didn't catch our last um, video, we basically use um, freecodecamp.org, and then uh, I logged in with my GitHub account and I use this one. So check out if you haven't checked it out. But we'll start with this one. So, um, so this is what we're gonna apparently build. So I'm just gonna start coding. So okay. So as you learned. So step one, as you learned in the last few steps of the cat photo app, there is a basic structure needed to start building your web page. Add the um, uh, doc type HTML tag and HTML element with a lang attribute of en. So what we need to do then is we need to add that doc type HTML tag and a HTML element. Oh gosh. Uh, and this is why I forget and struggle lang equals now you need to put that inside. Yes, that. Inside. I was going lang and then that's equals E N. I in quotes. I think it needs to be in quotes. That yeah, en needs, needs to be in quotes. quotes. Color coding helps with it because that. And that uh, and then you and need that, a close. Now you need to close it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so. Shift tab will move that over to the left margin. Yeah. The, there you go. So there you go. We're happy with that. Let's go on to the next one. Add a head element within the HTML element uh, so you can add a title element. The title elements text should be cafe menu. So what we're going to be doing is uh, head and then uh, title. So that should be cafe. But when you um have to put like uh, the uh like for example text, do you, is it best practice to have it like um you know underneath, or is it best practice to have the text like right next to the title? Yeah, it depends on what you're doing for different elements. When it comes to title, it's usually just all on one on one line, because uh it. It, it's just what's generally general good practice for the title. Other ones, you want to indent kind of like you have title under head. You don't want to put everything all in one line like that. OK, that's good. Uh, the title is one of the several elements that provide extra information not visible on a web page, but it is useful for search engines or how the page gets displayed. Inside the head element nests a meta element with an attribute named charset to value uh, UTF-8 to tell the browser how to encode characters for the page. Note the meta elements are self-closing. So they want, inside the head element, if they want us to nest the meta element. What they're talking about, actually, when they say inside the head element, I mean between the open and closing head elements oh, where like where the title is add another one yeah so you can add a new line there yeah um, yeah mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's before or after title it's just so it's inside the head element oh is this another one which is charles equals 
Yes. ETF. See, I'm getting, I'm getting it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then uh, this is a self closing tag as well, right? Or not? Yep. Self closing tag. Cool. Which means. Uh, this needs quotes, but. Correct. And to self close, some sometimes self closing uh, is to actually put the slash, but um, a lot of browsers will know what you mean when you don't put the slash. I just always do because then if I'm in an environment with a browser that doesn't understand that, I'm it's covered. So to, um, but it might, didn't we try that before and it didn't like it, right? Well, let's have a look. Well, apparently yeah. it just likes this, but what, okay. when, what do you mean when you pay so it? So at the, at the end, right before your closing angle bracket, go in one, yeah, space, and then uh, a forward slash. Mm -hmm. It's self-closing, so um, but it liked it the other way, so I wouldn't even I wouldn't even put that there for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. So let's have a look. So to prepare to create some actual content, add a body element below the head element. So we're gonna add a body element below the head element. So is that? I mean that that should be on the title. That's too. not that's not um, inside. That would be an inside. So words words are very important when you are communicating uh, and talking in terms of code because the word translates to something in code. So when you hear all throughout um, this segment when we're talking about HTML, when you hear inside, that means in between, or you might hear in between. Uh, it means in between the opening and closing tags. When you hear after, it really does mean after the closing tag of the whatever the one they're talking about. So they said after the head element. So right where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I need body close. So let's just have a look and shift tab. Cool. Another thing I want to mention about uh, right now, if you just take a look at what you have here on your screen, uh -huh. you have doc type at the top. If you go all the way to the top there, right? Doc type, yeah. that's become so. When we talk about when you want to create a new HTML page, like from scratch, some different page, you always want to have that doc type at the top. You want to have an opening, closing HTML tags because this says this is an HTML document. It needs those. But that HTML document has two main parts always, a head and a body. The head part is it's not rendered on the screen. You're not going to ever see anything on the screen in the main area when it comes into the head. What you will see, however, is that title will be what appears in the tab. So for example, this first, this tab that we have right now where it says learn basic CSS by building. This web page tab, if you put your cursor up there to show everybody what I'm talking about, you go all the way to the top, to the HTML tag, keep going all the way to the top. Uh, keep going all the way to your screen where it says, yes, keep going up, 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 right there. That's the tab of the browser. That learn basic CSS, that is the text that's inside of your title tag. Hmm. So when you're creating an HTML pay, page and you got you have your title tag, that's where that's going to appear up there in the tab. Now, go, come back down to the body element. That body element, anything you put in there is going to show up on the screen, right, for the most part. That's where you want to put the things that are going to be rendered. So as soon as we put something over here in this body, it's going to show up over here on our render side on the right hand side of our screen here. I just wanted to point out those two main sections of the HTML page, head and body. OK, cool. Yeah. Let's go right to the next one. So I'll do that there. I already donate to them uh, do uh, every month. Nice. Okay, uh, the name of the cafe is Camper Cafe. Add an H1 element within your body element. So we need to add a H1 element. And that should be uh, Camper Cafe. Uh, they wanted a force cafe. And then. Now, H stands for header. So anything time you uh, miss, yeah, there you go. We're missing a, um, anytime you see H, H1, H2, et cetera, those are headers and um, your screen readers will know, use those particularly to know that this is a head of a some section of, uh, of, uh, of information. So like we said, uh, when you put something in the body, it's gonna show up and there it is over in, it's being rendered. 
Although it doesn't like their code, so I'm not sure. C A M P E R Cafe. Maybe it doesn't like the, the space that's right before the word camper. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. To let visitors know the cafe was found in 2020, add a P element uh, below the H1 element within, with the text established 2020. So we're going to add a P element. And P does stand for paragraph. And then we're going to do this. And Andre, I would not get into the habit or I break the habit of putting a space after your elements. You, you don't need that uh, space yet. Yeah. Cool. Wait. Oh, wait, I did H1. Why did I do H1? That should there be. you go. Yep. Um, H1, so since a P element added in a previous set provides supplemental information about the cafe, and nests both the H1 and P elements in the head element. So nest both the H1 in the header element. So it needs a header. And then we will go down and close it off. Cool, like that. Uh, it's time to add some menu content. Add a main element below the existing head element. It will eventually contain pricing information about coffee and desserts offered by the cafe. So what we're gonna do is time to add some, add a main element below the existing header element. So we need to add a yep. main here. And then uh, just close it off. Yep. Great. Uh, there will be two sections on the menu, one for coffees and one for desserts. Add a section element within the main element. So you have to, you have a place to put all the coffees available. So what they are asking for is, uh, and then, Section. Check your code. Yep, lovely. Let's see if we can get through all the 92 today. Okay. I'll try not to, to, to blab on about things, or you can keep going while I'm talking. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. Uh, creating, I'm feeling a lot better today, so it should be all good. Create an H. <laughs> element in the section element and give it the text copy. So what we need to do is we need to create um, and then we just uh, give it the name coffee and then close off the, oh, I did it again, coffee and then H, uh, close H. It's, it's, it's uh, one thing about like just remembering to put the slash, the forward slash first before I finish it. That's one of the things that, you know, it's kind of muscle memory that I gotta remember it and uh, refactor it into my head for this. Yes. Um, up until now, you have been limited to regarding the presentation and appearance of the content you create to start taking control and uh, add a style element within the head element. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a style element within the head element. So that should be, I'll just carry on here. Style. Element. Is it, is that's, no, that's not self-closing, is it? No. Let's see. So we'll go to the next phase. You can add a style to an element by specifying it in a style element and setting a property for it like this, element property value. Center your H1 element by setting its text and line property to the value center. So what we need to do 
is uh, you can. Okay, let me say a couple things about this. Um, and, and it pertains to like how you uh, translate when, when you're learning something within code. This right here is basically a syntax. And, and you'll find this kind of thing in documentation all across the internet in regards to programming in different languages. So what it's saying is that, whoops, a particular thing, I, I went to click on it and I, I can't click on it because it's not my screen. <laughs> a particular thing is called that is called an element uh, that is what you're specifying the style for. And then the property is the name of the style and the value is, a, is the value you want that, uh, that property to have. So when you look down here at the instructions, it says center your H1 element. Wow. So H1 is the element, yes. Text align is the property. Text align is the property. So where's the word property? All right, yeah, okay, Yeah. Cool. And value center. So center is the value, and you just kind of plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. It just it just like uh, uh, I wish they like. I guess this is something they are getting you to try and figure out on its own. But when you read it like this, in a way, you kind of get sort of confused. I would say. Yes, yeah. I know it. Let's go through. Uh, so we will go through the next step. In a previous step, you use the type selector to style the H1 element. Go ahead and center the H2 and P elements with a new type selector for each one. So what we need to do is uh, H2. Use a type selector to style the H1. They basically want you to do the same thing that you just did for H1. Do that for also H2 and P elements. Is it the same? Yep, the exact same. Why is it not color coding properly? For me? You probably have to do the space and then put the name of the, or the right, value yeah. in yeah and then uh so they want center again mm -hmm. and t and then again text line and that should be uh, center again Right. Okay, cool. So let's just uh, check my code. Awesome. Can you see how over here at the side, oh. how our, everything is centered now? Yeah. 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 Camper calf. Cool. Use, uh, so then the next step is you now have three type selectors with the exact same styling. You can add the same group of styles to many elements by creating a list of selectors. Each selector is separated with commas like this. Use a selector list to center the at the same time. So what it's saying to us is instead of using this, it wants us to use selectors. So the so in in actual fact, what we're doing is H one, H two, P. And then property will be text align. Value will be center. Mm -hmm. And we'll get rid of all of this. Yes. So there is something in programming called, or tech in general, I think, called the dry principle. If you've never heard of that before, DRY stands for don't repeat yourself. And so you found what we were doing was repeating ourselves over and over and over. And um, there's always a, a better way when it comes to programming and just don't repeat yourself and just extract something out, reuse it, etc. So good job. Mm -hmm. um, so you have style free elements by writing CSS inside the style tags. This works, but since there will be many more styles, it's best to put all the styles in a separate file and link to it. We have created a separate styles.css file for you and switch the editor uh, view to that file. You can change between the files with the tabs at the top of the editor. Start by 
rewriting the styles you have created into the cells.css file, make sure to exclude the opening and closing style tags. So essentially, if I look back over here, um, this is my index one, and this is my cells. So, right, okay, I'm just figuring out how they, <laughs> how they, they actually yeah. did. But yeah, um, essentially how I did it was this, but they say to avoid styles. So essentially I just type what I typed before. So I'm typing um, H1, H2, and P, and then the opening this up, and then doing, uh, uh, and then doing. I don't um, know, do they want you to, Is are we in the style CSS file? Okay, we are. Yeah. Center. And then if I look at this, I should just get rid of all of this. Uh, I, let's see. No, I don't think you get rid of it. I think that's actually putting it over in your style CSS. If you click on that style CSS, yeah, that's what that is. You don't want to get rid of it because that's what you're adding there. But what about this? Do yeah, I that do? you would need to get rid of it eventually. But I think maybe that might be the next step. It should yeah. be. Oh, well, yeah, it likes this code. So we'll okay. go for it. Okay. Um, so step 16, now that you have the CSS in it, go ahead and remove the star element and all of its content. So it's asking to remove all of the star elements. So we will do that. Mm -hmm. The text was centered and she will shift back to the left. Uh, so we'll check your code. Great. So I guess in the next one, it's going to uh, link it. Yeah. Um, so now you need to link the styles of CSS file. So the styles will be applied again. Uh, nest the self-closing link element in the head element. Give it a rel attribute value, style sheet, and then href attribute value of style CSS. So from here, that's the self-closing link element in the head element. So we need uh, it's self-closing. So that's a good thing. Uh, we do link. And then we do um, give it a row attribute equals style sheet. And, and then h ref attribute value of style. CSS. You're missing something on your style sheet. Sorry? You're missing something on your style sheet word there. No, I mean back in your file. Oh, on right. your in your attribute, your style sheet value. Yeah. Uh, is it the uh, yeah. Yeah. And then is it a comma to go into the, or is it just nope, just a space. Is, is to separate a, attributes, just add a space. Yeah. That's it. Okay, cool. And now it's linked it. I can see it. It's um, actually applying all the centers. Value. Yeah. Cool. So what does row stand for? What is that? That is a good question. And I kind of forget, but I'll look it up real quick because I was wondering that myself. So I would basically go to over here and just say CSS, R-E-L. So whenever you're doing any research or looking for any solutions in terms of programming on the internet, always start with the name of the language that you are researching. So what's our language that we're researching? What's our language that we're using right now? HTML today. Well, it's actually this particular one. CSS, yeah. CSS. So I started with CSS and then I did my search and hopefully it will tell me exactly what REL stands for. Relationship. I can never remember that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Uh, link. So the required. But yeah, it doesn't even like have uh, like even looking at a quick example of, um, you know, from W3 schools. It, it says this, but it doesn't actually stay, say what it's. It does say cool. rel attribute specifies the relationship between. Oh, right. And so you can kind of assume it doesn't say that's what it stands for exactly, but that's probably it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. We got it. Okay, yeah. cool. So we're going to check our code and then submit and go to Except the next that. 
Okay, you didn't put the ending angle bracket on there, but it liked it and accepted it anyway. So you're good. Lots of browser agents are very forgiving. Um, um, some of them are not. If you want it to be strict, you can actually tell your browser in your code that you want it to be strict, and then it will not let things like that go by. Because there are times when, um, you know, in, in production environments and uh, very you know, important kinds of places and areas like that, you need to be very strict. And so you don't want to, you might just accidentally do things like that often, and you don't want to let yourself do that. You don't want it to let you do that. So you add, say, this should be strict. And I forget exactly how to do that, but if anybody's interested in how to do that, you can research it or let, let me know and I'll find out for us. Awesome. Right. So for step 18, for the side of the page to look similar on mobile as it does on a desktop or laptop, you need to add a meta element with a special content attribute. <laughs> add the following within the head element. Oh my gosh, I wish so many more sites actually did this. You have no idea. You try and view it on a mobile phone and you're like, oh, like just you know <laughs> yeah I, um, I i think we're getting better at it as, as an industry we're getting better at yeah it. yeah definitely especially like because a lot of content out there is um quite uh you know like uh, people view it via phones and you know like there's many times when you just go on the phone you might not be on your computer to do it so uh okay. equals the words yeah, I'm not. I'm not just copying and pasting. I'm making sure to type out all the code I'm doing. So, it's usually a good idea to do that if you can, especially when you're first getting used to a language or to a particular technology. And then, right, like sets. Good, good. So the text is centered again. So the link to a CSS file is working. Add another style to the file that changes the background color property to brown for the body elements. So it, what we essentially need to do over here is uh, just put background color. Uh, I'm British, so for me, typing color is uh, um, is not. <laughs> That's not how you guys spell it, is it? No, we have a U as well in there, so it's fine. But yeah, that, there you go. So now it's all brown, which is great. Uh, no, you should. Oh, you okay? Here's the problem. Yeah. So what you did was you assigned brown to your H1, H2, and P elements. Ah, yes, I did. I did uh, wrong. So they wanted to just do body elements. So therefore I need to write body because they don't want me to assign it to anything else. Uh, and then I'll just, again, even though I typed it, I still <laughs> will um, brown. And then I'm just going to get rid of this. Then, yeah, it hasn't changed, but that's because um, the body taken that Great. So we're mm -hmm. going to go into the next one. Um, so we've got that brown background makes it hard to read the text. Change our body's elements background color to be burly with. So it has some color, but you're still able to read the text. So it wants me to change it to... Burn. I haven't heard of that color before. I'm interested to see. Oh, nice. Oh. I like that. Burley wood. Kind the, of a the, coffee the, color. Yeah, it's, um, what would you say this? This is kind of like. Coffee a, with cream? I don't know. A coffee cream? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. Um, so the div element is used mainly for design layout purposes, unlike the other content elements you have used so far. Add a div element inside the body element and then move all the elements inside the new div. So what we need to do is we need to... Um, excuse me. For, inside the body element. Okay. Where should I put it? Do you do you usually put this like where in which section? Okay, and so add a div element inside the body. So probably um, since you have a section, and then move all the H two coffee. You probably want to put it underneath the H two 
in the section, well, but let me read it actually, again. Actually, it asks for move all the other elements inside the new div. So if it's oh. asking for that, so, so yeah. it there should be that, and then it should be... Uh, yep. yep there you go. Uh, the goal now is to make the div not take up the entire width of the page. So the CSS width property is perfect for this. Create a new type selector in a style sheet that gives your div element a width of 300 pixels. So create a new type selector in the uh, style sheet that gives you div element. So it's asking for a new type selector. So this is div. Mm -hmm. And then I will put out uh, width, mm -hmm. and then it's asking 300 pixels. So is that our thing? Yeah, 300 pixels. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Um, so in your style sheet, comment out the line containing the background color property value. So you can see the effect of any style in. Okay, cool. So this is where we learn how to comment, which is, uh, I use this in um, uh, some of the code as well, um, Terraform and stuff like that. Um, I sometimes use this, this way to comment out the code. Yeah. Like basically everything in it. <laughs> Um, so now, now use the existing div selector to set the background color of the div element to be burly wood. So we're gonna be um, cover is. Uh, Wonder oh, if it, it would like that. You wanna try I, it just to see if it'll accept it. it? <laughs> I don't. Need, I don't know. Maybe it will. Oh, it's got a little squiggly under it, so that's not oh, good. You should try it. No, it no. doesn't like it. Okay, fine. It doesn't like it. Yeah, there you go. All right. So nice try. <laughs> no, I'm sure there are coders and workings which do it does do accept it. It's just like yeah. Now it's easy to see that the text is centered inside the div element. Currently, the width of the div element is specified in pixels. Change the width property to be eighty percent to make it eighty percent the width of the parents of its parent element body. So okay. So change the width property to be 80%. So we'll, it's asking to change this to be 80%. Yeah. I'll check your code. Perfect. Looking so good. Next, mm -hmm. next, you want to center the div horizontally. You can do this by setting its margin left and margin right properties to auto. Think of the margin as invisible space around an element. Using these two margin properties, center the div element within the body element. So we need to center the div element within the body element. Okay, so margin left would be auto, a margin uh, right will be auto. Nice. Right. So. Perfect. Right, so far you have been using type selectors to sell elements. Uh, class selector is defined by a name with a dot directly in front of it, like this, dot class name uh, styles. Change the existing diff selector into a class selector by replacing div with a class name menu. So change the existing div selector into a class selector by replacing div with a class name menu. So that is um, to have a, for it to be a class name, you have to have a period in before it. So it just has to be class. or a dot, they're saying dot menu. Yes. So that indicates that menu is a class. There are other things we're going to learn about 
too, but that's a class. Now, I don't know if we need to go to index.html. Click over there to, to the index.html. And do we have a menu class specified yet? Okay, that's probably coming up the next lesson. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Okay, it likes it. So we'll go to the next one. To apply the class assign into the div element, add a class attribute to the divs element, open in tag, and set its value to menu. So over here, we need to add a class. No, 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 it's an attribute. So this is not a. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to remember that. Uh, class equals uh, menu. Awesome. Cool. That. Yeah. Um, so delete the comment and so first of all, so we need to delete the comments. Then now add a background image property to the and set its value to. So we need to. I think you it wanted you to delete the whole thing, the whole comment. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then that should be the whole thing. You need URL open parenthesis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Nice. Um, Makes me want to have a drink of my coffee. Yeah, I should have got some coffee before we start. <laughs> Um, it's looking good and time to start adding some menu items. Uh, add an empty article element under the coffee heading. It will contain a flavor and a price of each coffee you currently offer. So we need under the coffee heading. Okay, cool. So article. And I guess. Cool, on to the next one. So article elements commonly contain multiple elements that have related information. In this case, it will contain a coffee flavor and a price for that flavor. Nest two P elements inside your article. Uh, so let's nest the two P elements. Uh, the first one's text should be, okay, I'm just getting that going. Inside your article, the first one should be French. Cool, like that. Uh, do, when you do P, do you um again do it like this, or do you usually do it like? Yeah, it, it depends. If there's a if there's a more than one line, I will uh, put it in open and closing on different lines. If it's just one line, like um, a lot of times, and I forget exactly the length of a line. There's a standard length of a line that generally you shouldn't go past that many for readability purposes. If it's within that length, uh, put your open and closing on one line. If it if you need to wrap the lines, then I would um, put it inside on different lines. And let me look that up. That length. Um, but if you're using like an IDE that is like an IntelliJ or a um, Visual Studio Code or something, it will give you like a little gray demarcation so you can see visually what that line is that you don't want to go past. It's just very hard. You don't want to, as a developer or somebody else later down the line as a developer, looking at your code and having to scroll vertically. That's the worst. So general line, the rule of thumb is that it, unless it goes past that, just keep it on one line. But if it does, then two lines. Sounds good. All right. Well, let's go on to the next challenge. Um, starting below the existing coffee price pair, add the following coffee and prices using article elements with two nested P elements inside each. As before, the first P elements text should contain the coffee flavor, and the second P elements text should contain the price. So we got caramel macchiato. Let's see. So essentially, add the following coffee. 
sort them below the existing coffee price pair. So, before. So uh, I think. We'll... Uh, so essentially, it needs um, it needs the same thing over here, but like over and over again. So essentially, this is a lot of typing. But good. however, I think they they each one of these things is an article. So you're going to copy the whole thing, not the whole article. You're going to have that's one article, and then I you're going to have another article and another etc. And Using article elements, yeah. Okay, cool. So I need to do article, then P. This is one of those where I would actually copy and paste the code, but I will <laughs> type it out quickly here. Uh, caramel. Okay. So. While you're doing that, I'm going to look up the length of the line of code, like I was talking about, so I can find that at the standard length. So there's some differing opinions, but it looks like uh, maximum length would be around 80 to 100 characters per line, it's saying. And that's from codereadability.com. I'll take this off too. This is one I probably would have cut and paste and changed yeah, the values. I think I'm just, uh, that's why I said I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's just getting me to type uh, better, but like, yeah, I would just like honestly just copy and paste this one. Yeah. And uh, up to you though. Some people really like the feel of the keyboard, like typing. So Yeah, I know. Yeah. I just, um, we have some time as well. So I just want to, um, uh, let's see. So we got pumpkin spice, but we need hazelnut instead. So. Just gonna, and then we need mock, which is full. Uh, and then we will need um, mocha, my favorite, which is gonna mm. be a full point five oh. So yeah, it's the most expensive, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's go to the oh. next bunch. Um, so the flavors and prices are currently stacked on top of each other and centered with their respective PETA elements. It would be nice if the flavor was on the left and the price was on the right. Add the na last name flavor to the French vanilla's P element. So um, here it's asking class. Well, this is a uh, class name. I think they're talking about like um, the class uh, property of the P element. So you want to add, go to the, the opening P element and add a class attribute there. Yeah. Uh, inside the All right, yeah, yeah. Want to, like, class cool. equals. Basically, they're, we're going to, we're going to style that line, the French vanilla as uh, we're calling it, that's the flavor class. So that we're going to reuse that with all the different flavors, basically. Using your new flavor class as a selector, set the text align property to the left. So. Oh, I think they probably want you to type it down there where the number 17 is. Oh, okay. Or there are 16 now. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, interesting that you were able to click up there and start typing. I didn't realize you could do that. So. 
good so, job. That, that's the flavor. That's a class selector using that dot at the beginning. Awesome. Yeah. Flavor is another one of those words. Um, and then we're going to go into text dash align. And then we're going to set the property to left. Good job. Cool. So sub 35, next you want to align the price to the right, add a class named price to the P element. Uh, so let's see what we got. And uh, next add a class named price to your P element that has three. So again, we want to add a nice a class equals price. Again, a hand of us. Yeah, you um, are. Now align the text to the right of the elements with the price class. So we need to now uh, again do uh, price and then that, and then we're going to do align dash text. And then Whoops. we're going backwards. Text align. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, right. Check your code. Perfect. Right, sub so phase seven. That is kind of what you want, but now it would be nice if the flavor and price were on the same line. P elements are block level elements, so they take up the entire width of their parent element. To get them on the same line, you need to apply some styling to the P elements so they behave more like inline elements. Add a class attribute with a value item to the first article element under the coffee heading. So what we need to do is to get them, and you need to apply some. So they do. Add a class attribute to the value, the value to the first article element. Yeah, so, so I'm just uh, trying to. We're talking about the article element. So we want to go up to that article element. We're going to add an, uh, add a, yeah. an attribute there. Uh, this one like it. Add a class attribute with a value item under the coffee heading. Under the coffee. Oh, class equals. Coffee class table. equals. Class. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, class. Yeah. Equals. Yeah. Class equals item. There you go. And that, there you go. Nice. And I'm going to be right back, Andre, and let my dog in. He's barking. Yeah, no I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. so the P elements are nested in an article element with the class attribute of item. You can sell all the P elements nested anywhere in elements with a class named item like this, item P. Uh, using an above selector, add a display property with a value inline block so the P elements behave more like inline elements. So I'm both select add a display. All right. So where am I? Oh. Yep, nice. Um, then the next step is that's closer, but the price didn't stay over on the right. This is because inline block elements only take up the width of their content. To spread them out, add a width property to the flavor and price class selectors that have a value of each, of 50% each. So what I need to do is uh, width. And that will be uh, 
Good job. Okay, my code passes. So, well, that did not work. So, yeah, I was wondering because I looked at this. Um, that did not work. So, I then appear them as, as an inline block and placing them on separate lines in the code creates an extra space to the right of the first B element, causing the second one to shift to the next line. One way to fix this is to make each P element with a little less than 50%. So, change the width value to 49% for each class to see what happens. So let's have a look on the right. So if I change this to 49, ah, I see now it's gone left and right. So again, okay, hmm. cool. Interesting. So now we have French running on the left and this is on the right. So that worked, but there is still a little space on the right of the price. There's the space, okay. Um, you could keep trying various percentages for the widths, but instead simply move the price element to be on the same line and make sure there's no space between them. So, is that it? I'm not sure actually, let's try that and see. It didn't. Um, I really liked it. it yeah. Didn't like it. I don't. There's different ways that you can style things. It's just a ma matter of how, how you want to approach it. So this is one way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. There's many ways of actually, you know, solving it. It's just a matter of opinion to see who's, what kind of style you you as a developer team have agreed on. I guess um, mm -hmm. more than. Uh, now go ahead and change both the flavor and the price class which to be 50% again. So we shall do that. And hmm. Right, but it didn't change, so that's interesting. So now that you know how it works, you can change the remaining article and P elements to match the first set. So by adding a class item to the other articles. So we're going to be doing class equals item. Uh, yeah. Cool, so that's all changed. Um, just need to move the price to the right. Uh, next, position the other P elements to be on the same line with no space between them. So we are going to position the other P elements with no space between them, like we did here. So. Okay, nothing is changing for me. Well, you haven't assigned your flavor and price classes yet. So I um, imagine that would be next. That's what's telling it to be, you know, um, line right, line, a line left. So to complete the sign and add the applicable class names, flavor and price to all the remaining P elements. So class equals flavor. Uh, class equals price. Next one is class equals flavor. I think that's one of the reasons I didn't fully pick up HTML because I hated that you have to write American. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They should have different versions, right? Yeah. Different, different translations. 
Flavor is another one, so it's spelled with uh, the doll. So yeah, you got flavor, color. Um, let's see. So we're gonna push article class item. Not hazelnut. Uh, so I'm not again equals flavor. Again, uh, shit. and then it will be price equals. Wait, sorry, class equals price. And you need a class uh, yeah, above in that right. upper, yeah, right there. Uh, whoops. And then another one. One more. Yeah, I know. This is really <laughs> repetitive, isn't it? It's just like we're going to get you to really um, hone in onto your um, classes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's done. So, so four or five. Uh, if you make the width of the uh, page preview smaller, you will notice at some point some of the text on the left starts wrapping around to the next line. That, this is because the width of the P elements on the left side can only take up 50% of the space. Since you know the prices on the right have significantly fewer characters, change the flavor class width to be 75% and the price class width to value to be 25%. So flavor class is 75 and uh, price is 25. Okay. Next one. You'll come back to sign in the menu in a few steps, but for now, go ahead and add a second section element below the first for displaying the desserts or offered by the cafe. So we're just going to add a section here and close up. Add a HD element uh, in a new section and give it the text desserts. So we're going to add a H2 element desserts and then H. Uh, H2. Add an empty article element under the dessert heading, give it a class attribute of the value item. So we need to add an empty article element under the desserts heading. So And we also need to give it a class of item. I'm using control enter now, prevents me from uh, doing mouse clicks. Nest two P elements inside your article element. The first one sex will be should be donut, and the second text should 1.50. Uh, put both of them on the same line, making sure there's no space between them. Fine. So essentially, we're creating a new P element, and we're going to have donut, and then close P, and then we're going to open up another one, and we're going to put the fruit to be 1.50, and then we're going to again put that here. So check your code. Cool, like that. So for the two P elements you just added, add dessert to the value of the P element. As the value of the P element. And then, and the value price to be of the second one, so close. Okay, and con 
congratulations, your code passed, great. So sub 52, something does not look right. Uh, you added the correct class attribute to the P element with donut as a six, but you have not defined a selector for it. Since a flavor class selector already has the properties you want, just add the dessert class name to it. So, so it's a flavor. So we just need to do. You don't need a comma. I think it's just a space. Or maybe, no, 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 you're right. It is a comma. It is a comma. A space means a child when you have a space. Yeah. All right. Let's try that. Cool. Good job. Below the dessert you just added, add the rest of the desserts and prices using. Oh gosh, this is, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, doing this whole thing over. Uh, okay, that's kind of. Right, so. That's fine. So we just need to add cherry pie. And then I'm gonna do uh, two point seventy five, and we got cheesecake, which is uh, over here. And that's three dollars. And then we have cinnamon roll. And this is 2.50. Right, so let's see if that works. Yep, they like it great. And as on the right, I see I've got everything. Okay, you can give your menu some space between the content and the size of various pattern properties. Give the menu class a pattern left and a pattern right with the same value 20 pixel. So give the menu class a So what's the difference between padding left and margin left? Mm -hmm. So when you have two different elements, let's say I've got one element here, one element here. Uh, padding, let's do, let's start with margin. Margin says push the two apart, the margin in between. Padding will basically push out, if whatever I have inside here, padding will push out, but inside the box of the element. So think of the margin as on the outside and padding as um, on the inside. Oh. Because everything on the everything in an HTML world, like your divs, your Ps, your H2s, whatever, they all show up as boxes on the page, right? They're all squares. So the box uh, paradigm says, a margin says uh, push away from the box, and a padding says push within and give me some space within in the box. Uh -huh. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I think uh, Haroon said, where's the bootstrap CSS at? Um, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to link you guys the this um, f from the screen. So I'm just going to post a comment over here. And this is the actual um, link to the free code camp. So you can, uh, and thank you for the live. Um, for the comment, uh, here's a free code camp so you guys can uh, get view that. Okay, um, right. Okay, so we are now. What are we doing? We are this. We've added the pattern. So, brilliant. We will go through on the next one. Um, and now we're gonna look for. Um, let me see. Uh, so. That looks better. Now try to add the same 20 pixel pattern to the top and bottom of the menu. So what we're going to do is um, to the top and bottom of the menu. Now try to. Now this is confusing. Now... So there's also a padding top and a padding bottom. 
So maybe that's what they're wanting oh, us to add. Yeah. Top, and that should be 20 pixel. And uh, pad in, uh, if I can spell. And then pad in bottom. Uh, bottom is going to be 20 pixel. Right, okay, cool. So let's see if this works. Yep, brilliant. So we are we are there, 56 now. Um, all, right. all four sides of the menu have the same internal spacing. Go ahead and delete the four, four properties and use a single pattern property with a value 20 pixel. So what are we going? Um, we're going to be pushing out, since all the four sides of the menu have the same internal and delete the four properties and use a single property. Okay, cool. So this is if I was going to be very specific, but I guess if they just want me to have it everywhere, I would put it like so. Yeah, so let me just speak to that for a second. Um, the word padding, some of these styles have a, a shorthand, if you will. So you can have padding top, right, bottom, left. It starts like at the top and goes like uh, clockwise. You always start at the top and have those four values. It's a shorthand using just the word padding. You could say, let's say we wanted the left to be all different numbers, right, bottom, and all different numbers. You could still use the one word padding and add those in a, in a line. So right after your 20 pixels of padding, you would have a space and then the next value space, the next value space, the next value, all four values. And it starts with like as in a clockwise, top, right, bottom, left. And that's called the shorthand version as opposed to spelling it all out like we did here. Since it's all the same, you can go even shorter than that and just say just the one value apply to top, right, bottom, left. But if you ever want to just use the shorthand and you have different values, instead of having them on separate lines like this, you'd say padding, top value, space, right value, space, bottom, and left. And that's the same with margin. Margin works the same way and other val other properties that have, or other uh, styles that have the that type of um, character to it where you have top, right, bottom, left. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Strange. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't realize it gone from top, right, bottom, left. So it's like yeah. a, almost a like clock. Like the clock. Start at 12 and then you, you know, each interval, which is, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, I think we also have a, another comment over here. Do you want to read this, Connie, and go through this? I will go through on to the next step. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we have another comment too. He says, this is quite interesting. I didn't know you could comma separate a CSS statement to change completely different classes. Always thought it meant it affected nested child elements. So I think, uh, can we scroll up uh, in the page here for a second so we can see that H1 comma H2 comma P? Yeah, that means when you use a comma, which I almost got a little confused a minute ago, but it, with the comma, you're basically saying everything in this list, apply that, that style to all these things. When you have a space and no comma, that indicates you have a child element. Let's say you have a div and you have a div with the class, my class, uh, then you only wanted to uh, assign a style to the uh, my classes within, the, within a div as opposed to a my class that's within a paragraph. Then you could say div spa uh, space dot my class and that would apply that style to every div that has a child my class so the difference is that comma is just everything in the list gets that style without a comma it's the pair it's the parent child relationship you have a parent child type of thing hope that's helpful cool right so i've deleted all the um all the code now and i will check my code once more and it has done it so yeah it just like padding um so essentially just just so uh, yeah i mean yeah i could the, the, like for example, I have margin left, and maybe I'm skipping ahead, but uh, like I could have margin and auto to clean up this code even more, right? Um, here's how that works. So it's whenever you have a shorthand, it always considers all four all four places, uh, all four meaning top, right, bottom, left. Ah, okay. You have to have placeholders in there if you're not wanting to style or you don't care about certain ones. Like we have right now, left and right. 
When you want to just style something, it's the same left and right. You have to um, you have to kind of put something in that placeholder for the first one. So you'd have to have a, a zero space auto yeah. space zero, but you don't have to have that last one because if you don't have that last one, it, it assumes that the one that is left is the same one for right. So you play around with a little bit. Like if you had top and bottom that were the same, left and right that were the same, yeah. then you could just have Logical. the property of, yes auto space 50 and that would be the auto would be top and bottom and the 50 would be left and right so it works like that but you do have to account for all four things when you're using the shorthand cool all right yeah because right now i'm not mentioning top and bottom so if i did get rid of left and right it would actually also margin up my top and bottom which i don't want in this case mm -hmm. right okay so the current width of the menu will take up 80 percent of the body elements width on a very wide screen the coffee and dessert appear far apart from their prices okay they are add a max width property to the menu class with a value of 500 pixels to prevent it from the growing too wide so we need to we've got width so but we do need to add a max width and we're going to be push <laughs> i love how our friend <laughs> has gone um 500 pixel and then yeah so that has shortened it right so um sorry i wasn't really paying attention so i'm just going to do this quickly so if i okay I'm trying to see the difference between the width, but I don't really see a difference right now. But maybe, yeah, mm. maybe I'm just like. So max width means that if you're on a, like a, let's say um, a large screen and uh, you uh, have your browser and you are resizing it uh, and you make it really big, your, your thing that has like max width of 500 it will only go to 500 no matter how big you made your screen. You can make it smaller and once you get, it could go smaller, but and once you get big and once it hits that 500, it won't go any farther than that. It'll just stay 500. And sometimes you need to have those kinds of settings. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, um, yeah, I, I get that. So if I was like on a TV, obviously if I have a max width, it would be a better, um, you know, it wouldn't like go too far. It will just stay at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. In this case, we are kind of, um, it, we're not even previewing. We, we, we go very short. That's why we don't see the difference over here. But, you yeah. could set it to something smaller, like, I don't know, 100. If you set it, I don't know if it'll let you change it down there. Yeah, Try to see if you can change it, set it to 100 and see what happens there. Max yeah. width. Okay, see that is as large as it's going to get now you could probably scrunch it smaller than that if you if we were able to um resize this screen yeah, yeah. you know what so, i'm saying yeah yeah that, because there is a it, yeah it, it will go to a certain cool yeah that's yeah, fine that's I, always, I need to um oh sorry i need to actually do this stuff okay <laughs> we're getting distracted we're getting distracted we still got like 30 steps to do and <laughs> I think we can crack it out. Well, yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah. Yep. You can change the font family of text to make it look different from the default font of your browser. Each browser has some common fonts available to it. Change all the text in your body by adding a font family property with the value sans serif. Uh, so that's a very common font that's very readable. Right. So what we need to do is we need to add font family over here um, and put sans serif like this cool yeah, so nice bench. right it is a bit boring for the text to have the same font family of course you can still have the majority of the text sans serif and make the h1 and h elements different using a different selector sell both the h1 and h elements so that only these elements text use impact font okay so what we need to do okay uh right so i'm in my style css right so i need to 
but I'm just like thinking what I should do. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, if if it's asking me to just do the using the selector, mm -hmm. um, then I will do this. Then I will um, put front family, and then I will do this, and then impact. And hopefully yep. that's it. Yay. Yeah. Again, you don't have a semicolon at the end, but this browser is very forgiving. <laughs> if you had something where you were working in a, uh, in a strict environment, it wouldn't, it wouldn't right. like yeah. that. This, yeah, I uh, should have this, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it shouldn't like allow it to go through. To be honest with you, um, it's first forgiven. It's probably like the check conditions. Like, I guess when when I know they probably like gave up on the, <laughs> some of the check conditions at this point. They were like, oh yeah, leave that out or something like that." They were rushing to complete. Yeah, um, maybe they'll see the stream and maybe they will. Um, you know, change a lot it. of people are moving towards not uh, having, not using uh, semicolons at the end, uh, even in JavaScript, because oh. of uh, the Python community, I think, is a big influence on that. You don't have the semicolons in Python either. So I think there's just a big influence uh, towards it, like an undercurrent, not using semicolons. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, OK, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So add the fallback font. Uh, so you can add a fallback value for the font family by adding another font uh, name separated by comma. So uh, fallbacks are used in instances where the initial is not found. Add the fallback font serif. So hmm, what do I do? I, you want to separate it with by a comma. So remove the the, the semicolon. Basically, we're making a list of the different fonts that we want to use in order of preference priority. So it's going to look for impact. And you want it on the same line. Put it up there on the same line. Right after impact, comma, serif, and semicolon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's going to look for the first one to see if it has it in its if it's if it's available. If it isn't, it will have go to the fallback, which oh, you want to okay. use something like a serif. Yeah, because that's right. always available. Yeah, I understand it now. For some reason, I was like veering back to font family, but yeah, I see. Yeah, because if you just use font, it would just be one. But because it's font family, right? That, that's why you can. Of multiple. Is well, font, font family is the one. Like font impact is a font family because font families have different um, weights to them. They can be a light or a darker, a bolder one. Meaning, uh, you, the higher the weight, like a three hundred weight, is a, like a more bold font than a one hundred of the same family, like impact. So you can go out on Google Fonts and download really cool different kinds of fonts, and you can download specific weights of those fonts and specify and use them. It's a whole big deal, actually, with fonts. A lot of um, the, a lot can be said by the type of font that you use and communicated by the type of font that you use. So I'd encourage anybody who's interested in that to really dive into it and play around with that. Cool. Yeah. Right. So make the estimate 2020 text italicized by creating an established class select and giving it a font style property of uh, with the value italic. So full stop established. And then, uh, if I can spell, um, then we're going to make it make font style and then italic. And let's check that. Cool. Right. Now apply the established class to the um, class uh, to the established 2020 text so if i go on to uh here i would do class and then i would do established yeah that looks how about exciting. scroll down for us we can't see it here from my end over on the the render can are you able to scroll down on the right to show us that Oh, it's up. It's at the top. I was thinking it was at the bottom footer. We're not there yet. No, no, it, it, it's a tag. If you, if you just, um, for example, take this out, yeah. we should yeah. see it go back. 
Yeah, yep, there it is. All right, awesome. Sorry about that. It's all right. Uh, let's now go into the next one. So the typography of heading elements, uh, for example, H1, H2, is set by default values of users' browsers. Add two new type selectors, H1 and H2. Use a font size property for both, but use the value pix 40 pixel for the H1 and 30 pixel for the H2. So I need to add new types and two new type selectors. Uh, so I would write H1. Use a font size, but use a value. So I need two type selectors, but they're different, aren't they? Um, H2. Because one is going to use a value of 40 pixels. So we need to do, um, let me just go font size equal uh, blah, into 40 pixel. And then we're going to do, again, the same thing, but we're going to do font size uh, 30 pixel. And I'm not adding. But... Yep, perfect. Um, so add a footer element below the main element where you can add some additional information. So it's asking me to add the foot element below the main element. So here's my main. So I need to and close my footer. Perfect. Right. In, inside the footer, add a p element. Then next anchor uh, anchors. We haven't we touched them in the last um, video. Let's see if I can remember anything of it. <laughs> uh, then that's an anchor. And let me just uh, first of all do the P. Uh, so add a P element, then that's an anchor element in the P. So it will be A equals. Well, since, since A is an anchor, since that's, a, or that's an element, you don't put elements inside of elements. So where would the uh, element go if it's nested inside the P? Should be here, right? Yes, right outside of that. Yeah. yeah, but but it's it's in angle brackets. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. Yes. Yes, and then uh, oh, but I need href here, right? And then and then there will be this website. Yeah. And then. Let's see. What am I doing? Uh, P footer. So, what, so the reason why you don't see anything is because in order to know what to click on, the, the thing that you're going to click on goes in between the opening and closing A tags. Right now, you just have an opening A tag. So what yeah. I would do is I'd put that A tag on the next line. Let's put that hole in the A tag on the next line because that's inside the P tags. And then I would go ahead and say, okay, what are we going to click on to go to this anchor? And it says, and has the text, visit our website. Uh, now but that goes outside the anchor oh, yeah. bracket. Yep. Yeah, okay. there you now, go. You need to close that A tag now. Like so. Uh, nope. Like open angle, forward slash a closing angle. Yeah. Yep. There you go. That's it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is like the opening. I uh, include href class into it, and then once I have that within that, I add the text, and then I close the anchor. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Not bad for you know. For having a week gone by since the last yeah. time we did that. <laughs> right. So um, add a second P element below the one with the link um, and give it the text one to three, one to three free code camp drive. So add a second P element below the one with the link. So we need to add another one. Uh, P and then one to three free. 
code camp drive. I'll just have a look. Okay, yeah, so that's that good. Be good. Right, so step 67, you can use an HR element to display a divider between sections of different content. First, add an HR element between the first header and the main element. Uh, you can use HR element to display a divider between sections of different content. So if it's saying between the first header element and the main element. So I'm trying to figure out where. Um, where's where, the Where's the header element? This is a header element. Right. So between that one and main is where they want to put another HR, which that you have to go down. There's main. So in between that line, I'll scroll up. Uh, I think scroll all the way up. So line 14, between line 14 and 15 would be between the first header element and main. Is that where they want that? It says add HR element between the first header element and the main element. Oh, right. Okay. So here and so. Yeah. And so you can get rid of that, yeah. that right there. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So, it's so HR. Hard. Sorry. What, what did no, you say? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, HR stands for horizontal rule. Did they say that somewhere? No. So that the horizontal line is what that, yeah, does. So it seems to like it. Right, so we're going to go into there. So the default properties of an HR element will make it appear as a thin, light gray line. Uh, you can change the height of the line by specifying a value for the height property. Change the height value of the hr element to three pixels so we go hr then open up an element then height and then it would be free so and uh yeah nice the code so change the background color of the hr element to brown so it matches the color of the coffee bean so what we're going to be doing is uh same principle uh, color and then we're gonna put brown like that so yeah we have a we have a line over here that's nice. what the HR has done right on to the next one uh, notice the gray color along the edges of the line those edges are known as borders each side of an element can have a different color or they can all be the same. Make all edges of the HR element the same color as the background of it using the border color property. So what we're going to be doing is... Oh my God. Make all edges of the HR element the same color. So we need to use border color. to be oh brown yep so notice how the thickness of the line looks bigger um can't really see it on this screen but yeah okay uh, um uh, uh, the default value of a property named border width is one pixel for all edges of HR elements. By changing the border of the same color as the background, the total height of the line is five pixel. Three pixel plus the top and bottom width of one pixel. Change the height property of the HR to be two pixels, so the total height of it becomes four pixels. So, okay, yeah, that's, that's reduced it. Right, on to the next one. Um, go ahead and add another HR element between the main element and the foot element. So uh, now that I know the wording, um, so, and we should have a new line, perfect. And then it's asked to create a little more room around the menu. 
Add 20 pixels of space on the inside of the body element by using the padding property. So we're going to be um, adding the padding property. And we're going to be adding 20 pixel. Um, yeah. So remember when you asked me about the difference between margin and padding. Uh, yeah. And they're, here they're saying add 20 pixels of space on the inside of that body element, that padding pushes and gives space on the inside as whereas a, as opposed to if something you have margin in between, it pushes them apart from each other. Padding says, oh, give me space from within myself there. And uh, that's so that when you see inside the wording, use padding, outside use margin. Cool. So step 74, focusing on the menu items and prices. There is a fairly large gap between each line. Target all the P elements, P elements and nested in elements with the class name item and set their top and bottom margin to be five pixel. Oh gosh, okay. Just reading all of this and I'm like thinking, uh, target all the P elements nested in elements. So we're looking for that one, that that yeah. that uh, line forty-two, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to add uh, the class item and set the top margin. Top would be five pixel, and margin bottom will be five pixel, and. Target order. So I think I have to target. I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to copy. Uh, and I think I screwed up here. Just going to copy this. And then do I need to add it anywhere else? That's all you have to do. Um, that gives you the P item, the P uh, elements that have the class. Yeah, I think so. That item. Yeah. Okay, cool. Call passes so that we're on the right track. Um, using the same style selector in the previous step, make the font size of the items and prices larger by using a value of 18 pixel. So what we're going to be doing is... Um, so there's a style called font size. I don't know if we've used it yet. Font dash size. Let's hope that, we, that works. Um, probably will. Yep, I uh, definitely made the front bigger. So let's go for it. Yep. So changing the margin bottom to five pixel looks great. However, now the space between the cinnamon roll menu item and the second HR element does not match. Um, so between the top HR element and the coffee header. So add some more space by creating a class name bottom line using 25 pixel for the margin top property. So we need to create a class called bottom line. We need to open this uh, up and then we're gonna be using margin top. And then we're gonna use 25 pixel. Um, that should be it. Yep, perfect. Next one. So now add the bottom line to class to the second HR element. So the silent is applied. So we will do class equals bottom dash line. Check your code. Perfect. Nice. We are again now. Um, next, you are going to be styling the foot element. To keep the CSS organized, add a comment at the end of the styles of CSS with the text footer. So we need to um, add a comment uh, with the text footer. So. Right. Is it just the slash style could you use hashtags as well in HTML? You, you yeah. can. If it's on one line, you can certainly use a slash slash. Yeah. Oh, for HTML, yeah. no, you have to actually use this the the uh, slash uh, asterisk for HTML. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. Because I know most code uses hash for comments. Uh, just... And I need to correct myself. Um, sorry. That with CSS, you you need to use oh, the. HTML actually has different kinds of content uh, comments. Yeah, so that's the it's the angle bracket exclamation point dash dash inside those. I think mm -hmm. we went over this briefly last time. 
Moving down to the foot element, make all the text have a value of 14 pixel for the font size. So uh, we are in the footer, right? So we're in the cell CSS. So, so we need to use footer as an element. Then we need to make the text size, no, font size. Font size, right. And that will be 14 pixel. Um, yep, perfect. Right, uh, step 80. The default color of a link uh, that has not yet been clicked on is typically blue. The default color of a link that has already been visited from the page is typically purple. To make the footer links the same color, regardless if a link has been visited, use a type selector for the anchor element and use the value black for the color property. So what we need to do is awareness ours, so the default color of the vendor to make the footer links type selector for the anchor element. So we want to select the anchor element first. So let's create a selector for the anchor element. So that would just be A. A. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll get it. Yeah. There you go. And then uh, and use a value black for the uh, sorry, uh, color, font color. I think it's just color. Uh, in terms for the anchor element, this particular property that we want to set. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then that should be black. Yeah. Well, I'd like yep. to code. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you change properties of a link um, when a link has actually been visited by using a pseudo selector that looks like a a visited uh, property name, property value. Change the color of the footer visit our website link to be gray when the user has visited the link. Okie dokie. So what we need to do is mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, that would be That's the same property that we just styled above. Yep. And then I'll be gray. Yeah. So basically, that once I think I clicked on it before. But yeah. Actually, I don't know if I did. Hmm. Well, that seems to have worked. So that's good. Um. So yeah. So the next one is you change properties of a link when the mouse hovers over them by using a pseudo selector that looks like a hover property name property value. Uh, change the color of the footer. Visit our website then to be brown when the user hover hovers over it. So what we need to do again is a hover. So so let me just make sure. So I have a color to be black. Okay, if I visit it, it would be gray. If I now hover over it, it should be brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I now hover over it, yep, yeah, it's brown. Oh, okay, cool. So technically, because you know, usually I see different. Um, sorry, I'm. I just like to experiment. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, That's awesome. Go. Oh, okay, cool. Right, so brown. Perfect. All right, so sub 83. You change properties of a link when a link is actually being clicked by using a pseudo selector that looks like a active property. Change the fit so to be white when clicked on. Okay, so we're going to do again the same thing active and then open it up and then we're going to set the property to be color, which is going to be white. And then, so once I click on this, uh, okay. Cool, so that has worked as well. Uh, next one will be 
to keep with the same color theme, you already have been using black and brown. Change the color for um, when the link is visited to black and use brown for when the link is actually clicked. So what we're going to be doing to keep with the same color theme, you black and brown, change the color for when the link is visited to black, which is here. And use brown for when the, it's actually clicked. Yep. Perfect. So the menu text Camper Cafe has a different space from the top than the address space at the bottom of the menu. This is due to the browser having some default top margin for the H1 element. Change the top margin of the H1 element to zero to remove all the top margin. So change the top margin of the H1 element to zero. So so that should be just top margin. It's actually margin top is how that would go. Yeah. Your top, bottom, left, right, it's always after the main thing, padding, top, margin, top, et cetera, like that. Yep, good job. Uh, sub 86, remove some of the vertical space between the H1 element and the text established 2020. Change the bottom margin of the H1 to 15 pixel. So we need, again, margin bottom to be uh, 15 pixel. Yeah, and since we're experimenting here, if you wanted to try that shorthand, you could do, um, well, this is a little different here because yeah. they're different. I mean, I could show you that, but it would be a little bit confusing at this point. So we'll not go there right yeah, now. So we're we'll trying to finish. Left. You'll yeah. have left and right, yeah. Next time. <laughs> um, so um, now the top space looks good. The space below the address at the bottom of the menu is a little bit bigger than the space at the top of the menu in the H1 element. To decrease the default margin space below the address P element, create a class selector named address and use the value five pixel for the margin bottom property. So now the top space and the space below. So create a class selector named address. Yeah, yeah. I'm just reading through and making sure I I understand exactly what I need to do. Um, so that we've created address, we use margin bottom. And we use oh, there's my dog. Up. I'll be right back. I'm going to open the door for him. All right, sure. Hold on a second. Now apply the address class to the P element containing address. So, um, the P element. Good job. So the menu looks good, but other than the coffee beans background image, it is mainly just text. Under the coffee heading, add an image using the URL, uh, give the image an out value of coffee icon. So under the coffee heading, So, Do you remember how to add an image? Yep. Uh, a equals href. That would be the attribute is source for images. Oh, so, yes. Yep. That's yep. it. Uh, source equals, and then this. Out because but and I would put a space uh, after in uh, before alt before the word alt. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. That has passed. Okay, cool. So, sub 90. The image you added is not centered horizontally, like the coffee head in above it. Image elements are like inline elements. To make the image behave like heading elements, which are block level, create an image type selector and use a value block for the display property and use the applicable margin left and margin right values to center it horizontally. Ooh, okay, so we're gonna use um, types. No, hold on, hold on. And use a value block. Create an image type selector. So if I did image. Except that that's a class. You don't yeah. really need, yep. You don't need the dot. Yes, good. All right, so if something already exists, like image or um, if something already exists, uh, then you would just use use it. But if, it, for example, you need to create a new thing, then you would use a dot. To, like, for example, if I was going to use dot coffee or dot whatever, then that would be, that's when I would use it. Yes, and that's a that's a class attribute. So class equals whatever it is. The dot is with the dot. Yeah. Yep. So we are now. So use a use a value block for the display property. So display would be. Block. Do you remember what block display block is? They uh, kind of briefly touched on it. They really didn't go into it very much. When they yeah, said the well, div well. element, yeah, the div is a is a block type element. That means that a block element is um, on the takes up the whole line and, and anything next to it has a, it starts on a new line. So making this a, dis a block display means that it's making a block element yep, instead yeah. of an inline element. What do I do for margin? Do I just write center? This yeah. says margin auto, probably, since we want to oh, center yeah, it. Remember we did that before? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, display block, that should be fine. Cool. Add awesome. one more image under the deserts, uh, deserts head in using URL, um, CDN free um, code camp. Give the image an out. So, under the deserts, we need to add an image, and that will be. Goes and out will be um, equals pi icon. So this is it, and then. It's already styled. You don't have a closing brace. Well, it didn't. <laughs> it yeah, let you get away with that. Let me get away so, with it. But they need. They shouldn't let me get away with that. Not brace, but angle bracket. Yeah. 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 Right. So it would be nice if the vertical space between the HG elements and their associated icons was smaller. So the HG elements have default top and bottom margin space. So you could change the bottom margin of the HG elements to say zero or another number. There is an easier way. Simply add a negative top margin to the image elements to pull them up from their current positions. Negative values are created using a minus in front of the value or dash. Uh, to complete this project, go ahead and use a negative top margin of 25 pixel in image type selector. So we need to negative top margin. OK, cool. So if we need margin dash top, and then we need negative 25 pixel. You just need a colon after margin top. I don't know if it's small. Uh, there you go. Thanks. That's it. Hey, you got then, your. Right, wow. See? So, awesome. 22, which is great. Okay. So, let me just um, go back to where we were. So this is the responsive web design, right? Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully my me refreshing the page, it has 
completed all of this. Why hasn't it completed for me? It doesn't like free and fair one. Uh, Let's check it out. Um, so the title uh, is one of the inside the head element. That's the meta element. Okay, we did that. So the value to we did that. No, the, okay, we done that. Right. Let's go back. Did yes, it has completed it. Weird. Maybe we just didn't click the the go forward or whatever button. I don't know. Um, it's probably like same thing. And let me just uh, go back to here. And yes, it has now. There it is. Liked okay. It. <laughs> okay, cool. So now that we've done these two, so we're going to be basically working on this one next. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break, I think, because I've got things which I can't really get out of. Um, but yeah, we'll be starting back in August and I will set all the scheduled um, uh, YouTube and we will, we will be um, keep going with this. Um, yeah, and it's going to be, again, same, same day, Saturday, 5 p.m. Uh, UK time. Right, so our next our next first one will be let's see, let me just check that August is that the sixth then? Uh I think it was the fourth, isn't it? Was the sixth? Let me see. Um yeah, August sixth. That's the right. that we're gonna be doing. So all yeah. right. Hope, hopefully you all enjoyed the stream. Um, if you're catching it uh, on replay, then uh, you'll hopefully you enjoyed it. And c please feel free to catch up, and we'll definitely catch you on the on our other side in August. Yeah. So scroll down real quick, Gary. Go back to the menu for Free Code Camp. If you click on, go all the way to the top, real quick. Uh huh. And then, okay. See the the keep going all the way to the top. The black bar at the top, Free Code Camp. Click on that. Yeah, so see all of these modules? We're gonna be going through every single one of these eventually. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, the, the key to being successful with programming in your career, really, you're always gonna be learning something. You, it seems like it doesn't make any sense to just do this little bit at a time, even at once a week, but the key is consistency. If you will show up and just go through these, you will be amazed. Pretty soon time will pass doing other things and you'll wake up one day and you know, you've know you got this great certificate, you've got this great experience. So if you just scroll down here, we're gonna be doing some exciting things like you know the, uh, the machine learning is gonna be really exciting. The uh, scientific computing, relational databases, all this stuff is really cool. I we're gonna know. be doing it all. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, responsive web design is like, you know, this is the basics, but like, basics. Yeah. but you know, I'm looking forward to like going through all of this stuff and, you know, especially like machine learning, Python, and uh, it's going to be really awesome. So I can't wait for that. Yeah. So thanks, Andre. It was great being here. Brilliant. Th thank you, Connie. Um, all right. We'll see you on the other side. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye.